Welcome to, to Gemini's Touch Up 101. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the various aspects of repair. Um, we'll begin with the five basic principles of a good repair. Um, our first principle of a good repair is the background color, that base color. And that's the lightest color that we see in the background of any repair. The next item that we're going to look at is level, whether that repair surface is level. Um, oftentimes we can do a mediocre repair and as long as it's level, it's very passable and acceptable. So level is critical in any repair. The next thing that we want to think about is texture. Sometimes we're dealing with open grain finishes or closed grain finishes. So we need to address the texture of the finish. Then the next item, the fourth item, would be grain lines. Whether they're large grains, small grains, that's where the coloring of the repair comes in. And we'll show you how to uh, use different techniques to apply color to the repair area. And then the final item is sheen. We can do the best repair possible, but if it's too shiny or too dull, we'll see it from across the room. So sheen is very critical as the final step of a repair. Let's talk a little bit about some of the products that we have uh, available to us in repair. We manufacture uh, wax sticks. Wax sticks are the kind of base of the repair. It's where most minor repairs start. Wax sticks can be used to fill and color at the same time. And we have those available in 96 different colors. Wide selection of colors. Our wax sticks are about a third larger than the competition and the wax is a little bit harder so it's going to make a better repair. And we'll look at those a little closer later. The next item in a basic repair is a marker. And we have two types of markers that we use. We have a paint pen and we have a production marker. Let's talk about the production marker first. Production markers are a wick style marker that use a dye based ink. We have these available in about 120 different colors. This is a translucent color that we can see through and see the grain of the wood. The next item that we have is a paint pen. Paint pens will be in wood tone colors as well as the more opaque whites and blacks. And these typically will um, be more opaque, uh, higher hiding, more viscous material. And we use a little different marker delivery system. This has a uh, valve type marker where you actually depress the nib to deliver the material. With any marker when you're using it, you need to have a rag handy because they do tend to drip a bit. And we want to make sure we don't damage anything. So that takes care of wax sticks and markers as the beginning of our, our product line. Then we can move in to our finish putty. Finish putty is a wax based putty and it comes in all the 96 colors that we have. It's about the consistency of shoe polish um, and where the, the advantage to this product is if you have multiple nail holes to fill or seams, maybe in a crown mold, uh, seams in a cabinet, um, we can fill them much faster with this uh, using a plastic spatula or a credit card to squeegee the material into the defect. Level it with that credit card or that plastic card and then wipe it clean and we're done. Um, far superior to uh, color putty or some of the other putties that are available as this is a pure wax product and once you wipe it clean it stays clean. And again available in 96 different colors. Then we can move on to burn in as a repair. Burn in we use uh, a hard burn in stick material that we will melt with a knife and drip it into the defect. We'll use that hot knife to level and this will be a more um, permanent type repair. Where a wax stick, typically we will only use uh, below countertop level or above where we can reach comfortably um, as it is a temporary repair. This would be a more permanent, a long lasting, more aesthetically pleasing repair. Another repair product that we can use is an epoxy. And we'll do an epoxy repair today and show how that's done. Epoxy is a, is a two-part material that we mix, um, mix the two parts together 
and create a, a hard, long-lasting repair. Um, next items we have uh, in repair. Um, we may want to add color by another means rather than a marker. A more precise way would be with powders. And we can take our art brush, mix our powders with our padding lacquer as the vehicle for, this pro uh, for the powders, and apply exacting lines of color in a wide range. We have our powders available also in 96 different colors. Once our area is filled, we have our base color, we have our level correct, we have the texture correct, and we have our grain lines correct, then the next step is going to be preserving that repair, protecting that repair um, with a clear coat. And with that, we would use one of our aerosol lacquer products um, to build up that film finish over the repair uh, to protect it. Once that has been protected with one of our high solids aerosols, then we can come in with our touch-up aerosol, which is a low solids material, to adjust the sheen and get the sheen exact. Our touch-up lacquers are available in six different sheens. That way we can dial in and get the exact sheen that we need. We're going to work on a uh, wax stick repair at this point. Um, wax sticks are available in 96 different colors. Um, we have uh, a wide range of color to choose from. Wax stick repairs typically are used for minor repairs, um, small nicks, small scratches, uh, maybe a nail hole or small imperfection. Typically we'll use these below countertop level um, or above where we can comfortably reach. We need to remember that a wax stick repair is always a temporary repair. It may last five seconds. It may last 25 years. It will never be any harder than it is right now. So this is not something that will harden over time and get better over time. It just is a, uh, a it is what it is on the, on the hardness. Um, what we want to do first is we'll look at our sample panel here and we're going to want to pick a color that would be as close to that background color as we can find. Now typically with a wax stick, I will try to pick a color that maybe appears just a touch darker than, the, uh, than that background color. And that's a pretty good color there. So we're going to make a small defect here. Um, small chip in the surface. We want to make sure that the area is free of any splinters and that we have a nice level area to work with. If the wood is puffed up around that area, we would want to take and trim that away. We want to make sure that it is level. And we're simply going to take the wax stick and rub back and forth across the defect until the defect is filled. We can then take a, a credit card, plastic card, and level. I'll take a clean towel and clean around the surrounding area, being careful not to hollow out the repair with my fingertip. We have a nice level repair and the background color should be very close to what we need. Wax stick repairs are very simple. To enhance that repair, we may take one of our markers, and this happens to be uh, our PM2406 Burnt Sienna. I'm going to lightly touch that surface with the pen, transferring some color, and then blending it with my finger. Another type of damage that we can repair with a wax stick is the cross grain scratch. And we'll cut a little cross grain scratch in here. that's nice and level. One of the first things that we're tempted to do when we see a scratch and a defect like this is to grab our marker and color it in with a marker. But what happens with that is, is those fibers are torn where the scratched area is. So 
what we really need to do is close up the pores of the wood prior to adding our marker color. And we'll do that with our wax stick. Again, we pick a color that's close to that background color, rub it back and forth across the defect until it's completely filled. Take that plastic card and level again. And we'll clean the surrounding area. Using again just the tip of the marker, we will add some color to the surface and blend that in. Anytime we use a marker, we should use our finger to blend that color back in. Let's look at the same type of scratch, but using the marker first, and we'll see what happens. We can see that the surrounding area picked up way too much color. Now that scratch really stands out. So remember to always fill with the wax stick first on a scratch prior to applying the marker. Okay, the next repair we're going to do is an, an edge repair, um, maybe where we sanded through on the edge of the color. And I'll just use my razor knife to scrape some color back on the edge of the board. And this type of repair is very easy to do. We're going to use our PM marker again. This is our wick style marker, our die based marker. And we're simply going to run that along the edge and then blend with our finger. And this will take care of most edge damages. The nice thing about the marker is it is dye based. It does bite into the surface and will, uh, will adhere very well. These are also available in about 120 colors, wide range of colors. Touch up is all about color. Our next marker is the paint pen. It has a valve type nib on it. And what we're going to do with this marker, the very first thing, we're going to make sure the cap is on well, and then we're going to shake this. This is like a bucket of paint that we need to mix up. Colors tend to separate over time, and to ensure that we have a consistent color from this marker, we want to make sure that we agitate it each time we use it. Now this is a new marker, so it hasn't been activated yet. And what I'm going to do here is, I always have a rag handy anytime I use this style of marker. And just on the surface here, I'm going to pump this tip. We'll pump the tip a few times, and we'll see that the material is starting to flow. The reason that we use this style of marker and this style of, of uh, delivery system is this is a highly pigmented material. And the material is actually flowing around the outside of the nib. If we use the other marker, it would actually strain out some of the pigments and remove some of the pigment and the color that we have. So again, let's look at an edge repair. We're going to take and just scrape back some color. We apply it in the same way as our other marker, just along the edge. And again, we're going to blend that with our finger. The advantage to this marker is it's a little higher hiding. It's going to obscure that background a little more than a dye marker will. Here's a corner that's been knocked off of a panel, and we're going to do an epoxy repair. Epoxy would be our first choice on a repair like this. A wax stick would not be hard enough. It might get knocked off again. A burn-in would be a little too brittle but the epoxy gives us the strength we need to rebuild this corner. And one of the things in repair that we try to do is maintain the repair field. We don't want to get a larger repair area than when we started. So I'm going to protect the surrounding finish with a little bit of masking tape prior to starting the repair. We're going to take and just lay this masking tape on as close up to the edge as we can of the repair area. 
This is going to be a sacrificial surface for us when we begin to sand and level this repair. Again, we don't want to damage that existing finish. So we're going to take our epoxy. It comes in a tube. Um, it has a, uh, a filler center and a resin on the outside. And when we mix those two together, that's when the epoxy uh, forms and it will harden. Now it's important to slice off what you need rather than tearing off what you need. If we tear it off, we might distort the amount of hardener to resin. So we're going to pull that off. We sliced off about an eighth of an inch of material. And you can see that it has uh, a gray center and a pine color on the outside. We're going to mix these together until it's one consistent color. We want to make sure that we don't have any marbling or any uh, gray streaks running through the epoxy before we apply it. This will ensure that the material will harden as necessary and not have a soft spot in it or an area that just will not harden. Okay, we've mixed it and it's one consistent color. We're going to take off a small piece and press it into the corner, into the fibers of that, that panel, fibers of the wood. We we'll always work back against the corner so that we don't break that bond. Pit, pinch off just a little more. And we're going to build that corner up now to replace that missing corner. We want to leave it a little bit proud of the area. We don't want to have to come back and refill, so we want to make sure that we get plenty of material on there to fill that corner in. Once we get the corner shaped, we're going to leave it alone. It's going to take about 15 oh, to 20 minutes to harden. And then we can come back, sand that level, trim it, and prepare it for the color. Um, this is our burn-in knife. This is an 18-watt knife. Um, we sell several different burn-in knives. The 18 watt is the uh, coolest, if you will, um, of the, the burn-in knives. Um, 18 watt gets plenty hot enough to, to do the work that we need to do. Um, but we do need to prepare these knives every time we get ready to use it. Whether the knife is brand new and out of the box or one that we've used multiple times. We always prepare the knife prior to use. And the way we do that is we can take some four or 600 grit sandpaper, uh, lay it on a nice smooth flat surface. And then we want to lay the knife down on that surface flat. We don't want to have it tilted up. We want to have it nice and flat. And then we're going to clean that surface. We look to make sure that we're getting a nice even cleaning. If we see it getting shiny just on one edge, then we know we're not flat enough. We need to be perfectly flat. So we're going to clean both sides of the knife. And make sure that it's flat. The next surface that we're concerned about is the very tip of the knife. Again, we're going to stand this knife up as close to 90 degrees as we can. And we're going to drag it across the paper. We're going to take a look at it to make sure that we're getting it evenly cleaned from edge to edge. And then the final preparation for the knife is to dub the blade. We want to maintain a nice square edge on our knife, but we need to knock off that sharp edge that's there. So one pass at about 15 to 30 degrees across the paper. We're going to turn the knife over 15 to 30 degrees and dub that blade. Now our blade's ready to be used. We're going to do a, a burn-in repair. Um, this is a defect in the center of the panel uh, near an area of open grain. Um, and we have some choices as far as the materials that we can use for the repair. We could use a wax stick repair uh, to fill that in, but it wouldn't be a very long-lasting repair. Someone could dig that back out with their finger. Um, epoxy might be another choice. Um, but again, sanding this around a finished area would be very difficult and we might enlarge the repair. So burn-in is probably going to be our best choice for the repair. So what we want to do is look at that background color of the panel 
and try to pick a burn-in stick that is awfully close. Now, we, we know how to pick a wax stick, so the wax stick that we used earlier happened to be a 2436 wax stick. Well, that matches our 2436 burn-in stick, so I know that that's going to be a good color. So I'm going to go to my selection over here and pull out a traditional burn-in stick. We can talk just briefly here about the different types of sticks that we have. We have a traditional burn-in stick that is very hard. We have a satin stick that's just a little bit softer. Where we would use the satin stick is in repair areas that maybe we're going to take um, repeated bumping. Maybe the edge of a table where a chair keeps hitting it. We would want to use the satin stick. It's going to be a little more forgiving, absorb some of that punishment. Still going to be a little bit softer. We can actually dent the satin burning stick with our fingernail. However, the traditional burning stick is very hard. We cannot dent it with our fingernail. And for the center of a panel would be our best choice for a repair product. What we'll want to do is our knife is now heated up. This is our stand for our knife and the stand is used like this. We don't want to set the knife on like this because then the stand would heat up. So keep that in mind. Always set it up on the collar when you're returning it to the stand. We have our burn-in stick. I'm going to take and melt the material onto the knife. And then I'm going to drip this into the defect. Using the tip of the knife to manipulate the material and drag it around. Now I do want it to be well above the surface and it is and we're going to allow that to cool. I always have a rag handy when I'm doing a burn in and I make sure that I keep my knife clean. This material will cool and harden rapidly. This material has already started to cool and now is nice and hard. Now prior to filling, I needed to make sure that I didn't have any splinters sticking up and that the area was free of any defect um, splinters, loose material that might be sticking up. So once I've determined that everything's clean and, and ready, then we'll drip, drip the burn-in material in. The next step is going to be taking some magic balm. And this is a lubricant that will keep the burn-in material from sticking where we don't want it to, like down in the pores of the wood or the surrounding surface. And we'll use a liberal amount of it. Again, we have a rag nice and handy. And I'm going to use a stroke like an airplane coming in for a touch and go landing. And just touch the surface of that material and to begin to heat it. In each subsequent stroke, I will clean my knife and apply slightly more pressure. And this will allow us to level this area uh, completely. So we're going to start by just coming in and touching the top surface. And you'll see we immediately start picking up material. And again, a nice slow pace, a little bit of light pressure and the fewest number of strokes across the surface to get it level. We'll now check for level and that's pretty level. I'll then take some of the, four, the 600 grit sandpaper, just a small piece, and I'm going to sand the area. And just one or two passes are all we need. We're going to wipe off our magic balm and check for level. And a good little trick is to run your finger across it while looking away and see if you can locate the repair. Again, level is critical. So let's review just a minute. We have our background color through our burning stick and we have our level. The next point of a good repair is the texture. And in the area of this repair where we see this dark grain, these are open grain lines that we need to replace. But they only go part way into the field of repair. 
I can use just the edge of the burning knife and come in and very carefully touch the surface and apply some grain lines to the surface. Again, that's going to push some of that material out. So I can come back and lightly sand it to level that area. Now we have our texture, we have our background color. The next step, we need to add grain lines and finish the coloring of the repair. We've allowed our epoxy to dry. Now we're going to come back with a block and some 150 sandpaper and sand this level. Keeping in mind that we've put the masking tape on here as a sacrificial surface to protect our finish. If we happen to sand through the masking tape, we're going to stop, reapply the masking tape to protect that surface. We'll sand this level. I'll check periodically to make sure that I'm not sanding through the masking tape and not damaging that surface below. Now we have this sanded down pretty close. We're going to remove the masking tape. And we feel a little bit of a, a lip there for the difference in the thickness of the masking tape and our final surface. I'm going to extend the blade on my knife, lock it in, and come in and just very carefully trim away that excess material level with the surrounding surface. Check this for level with my finger. I need to trim just a little bit more. And now we have a nice level surface. I'll take a little bit of the 600 sandpaper just to finish off any little bit of difference there might be there. I can take the tip of my knife and in this area where I have more open grain running through their field of repair, I can take the edge of my knife and scratch in a few of those texture lines for the repair. Now at this point, my repair is ready to have color added to it. And we'll come back in in a few minutes and add with an art brush individual grain lines to replicate the surrounding grain area. Okay, the next portion of our repair is going to be putting in the grain lines and the color on the repair area. And again, we have lots of choices on applying color. We've used a touch-up marker to apply color, and we could do that here, but it wouldn't be very exacting. Um, we have a pretty pretty wide tip here and it's very difficult to put in fine grain lines. Now one thing that we can do is use an art brush in conjunction with a marker. I can simply lay the brush on the side of the marker and pick up some color from the marker 
and apply it with the brush. That works well if we put the right color in the marker for you. But let's say that we need a very precise color. A way for us to, to deal with that and to make a precise color is to use a powder. One of our touch-up powders. What we'll do is put out a few different colors. We're going to start here with a perfect brown and we'll take a little bit of material about an eighth of a teaspoon or so and put in the dish. We're going to put just a little bit of dark mahogany out. We're going to arrange this like an artist palette with several little piles of powder. And we're going to use again that 2436 color which is an exact match for that wax stick that we used and the burning stick. We'll put those items in one dish and in another dish we're going to place some padding lacquer. This is the vehicle for the powder. It allows us to mix the powders and blend them together in a material that has a little bit of binder to it so that when we've completed the repair the binder will hold the powder in place. I like to tilt my dish, dish up at an angle I'm going to wet my brush, clean it out here just a little bit. We have our powders arranged in a dish. Um, we have uh, perfect brown, we have a little dark mahogany, and we have some of the uh, cherry powder, the 2436. And we're going to mix those in a dish. Now I just want to wet my brush, and I'll pick up a little of that color and mix with the padding lacquer. Padding lacquer is our binder for the powder and allows us to apply color grain lines and have them stay where we put them. The important thing about touch up is less is more. The fewest number of brush strokes, the fewest number of grain lines to pull off the effect that we want. We're getting very close. I'm going to add just a little bit of the perfect brown to this is going to darken it just slightly and we'll put in a couple of lines in next to the lines that we had placed. Less is more, the fewest number of brush strokes to pull off the repair. We're going to maintain this material and keep it out. I'm going to set this panel aside and it'll be a little easier to see on this epoxy repair corner. If you remember We've, uh, we've applied the, the material, we've sanded it, we've leveled it, and now we have a nice level surface and the corner has been restored to the panel. And again, I'm going to pick up the color and I'm going to apply just a few grain lines. Just with the tip of my brush and put down the finest line possible. I don't try to paint the entire area with brush strokes. The key to a good repair is individual lines of alternating color. This is not the side of the barn and we don't want to just paint the material on and have it puddle up. What happens if you do put on too much material, the material tends to bleed into the surrounding areas, uh, picking up the colors and it becomes muddy looking rather than distinct lines of color. I'm going to add one other color to our dish. Uh, we'll add a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown to give us a little darker range of color. But we can intermix the powders to come up with any color that we need. That's the versatility of using powders in Touch Up. When you use just one of the graining pins that we have or one of the markers, you're really limited to which color we put in that, that tool. So, we've mixed our powders a little bit. We're going to add just a touch of the Van Dyke Brown and darken this slightly. Sharpen our brush and apply a few grain lines in between the lines we've already placed. 
I also recommend don't trying to eat the elephant all in one bite. Let's sneak up on this repair. We're going to cover up part of it and just work on a very small area. Once we get that correct, then we can move across the panel. Again, we're putting down just the lightest line possible. We're going to put down three or four strokes and alternate our color. We're going to go back to a little bit lighter color. This builds the illusion of depth. If we look at a panel underneath a magnifying glass or a microscope, what we see is just a series of lines of alternating color. That's what we want to try to duplicate with our art brush. I think the best art brush to use is the smallest one we can get. If the brush is not quite small enough, I'll take a razor knife and trim the hairs to create the brush that I need. And again, the fewest number of brush strokes to pull off the repair. Okay, we have completed the application of our color um, with our powder and with our uh, padding lacquer. And we need to understand that that color, though it's dry to the touch, is just setting on the surface. And we need to protect that. And we can protect that by building up a film coating over the surface. One of the products that I would suggest is a high solids material either a pre-cat aerosol or one of our high solids lacquers. This will build a film finish up over the repair to protect it. Now I want to caution you about wetting the repair out, whether it's over a burn-in or over the epoxy. We don't want to apply too much material at a time that could cause those color particles to float and drift together and become muddy. So we want to maintain that crisp, clear lines of color that we've put down. And we'll do that by applying light misting coats of the material. Multiple coats building up uh, the film over the repair. After several dusting coats, we can apply a medium to wet coat over the area. Allow that to dry. We're going to see a halo from the aerosol because it is high solids. So the next product that we want to use to get rid of our halo is our touch-up aerosols. And the touch-up aerosol will always say touch-up on the can. These are a low solids formula that have a little bit of retarder added to them to slow down the drying time. And this allows us to spray just the spot or the corner of a board or the center of a panel and not leave a telltale halo in the surface. Aerosol toners are a, 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 is another tool that we can use in touch-up. They can be a big part of touch-up. If we need to change the color tone of an area on a panel or a piece of furniture, it can be done very easily with aerosol toners. Our toner color system we have on clear acetate a variety of colors of toners to choose from. With it being on clear acetate, we can actually take and lay this over the wood and get an idea of what that aerosol toner will do for us in adjusting the color. I'm going to take one of our panels here, cover up a portion of it, and apply a little bit of aerosol toner. Just a couple of light passes, and we should be able to see the difference that the toner can do for us. In this case, I used the Cordovan Mahogany, which added a little bit of a red tint to the surface. And this allows us to adjust color. Say so we have a five-piece door on a, on a kitchen cabinet, and that center panel appears to be a little too red. We could use one of our green cast toners to neutralize that. 